24 News starts now with a breaking news alert. A breaking news coming to us from 30th Circuit Court in Ingham County. Rashad Trice, the man charged with kidnapping and killing two-year-old Winter Cole Smith, has pleaded guilty. That plea comes just one day prior to the one-year anniversary of her death. Let's get right to Mara McDonald. She's live at the Michigan Attorney General's office in Detroit. Mara, what more can you tell us? Well, Kimberly, I, I, let's just put it this way. With the charges that Trice has pleaded guilty to here, it means that he is going to prison for the rest of his life with absolutely zero shot of parole. I think everybody at home is going to remember when this happened at this same time last year. I was out there the night they found Winter dumped in an alley on the east side. And you'll remember that Rashad Trice had been arrested earlier. They'd gotten him in St. Clair Shores. But Little Winter wasn't in the car with him. So what the feds and DPD had to do was use his cell phone to triangulate his position. So they started doing a grid search on the east side. And sure enough, after several hours, they found the little girl who had been strangled with a hot pink cell phone cord dumped in an east side alley. So, you know, Trice had been involved with Winter's mother at one time and had driven to Lansing to where winter and her mother lived had gotten into a fight with his former girlfriend had sexually assault her assaulted her had beaten her and then he grabbed winter sparking a statewide manhunt all of it of course ending up in, in terrible way in that east side alley and you know while he has not been sentenced yet Devin and Kimberly these charges make it very clear that he will never walk the streets ever again we're live at the AG's office in the News Center. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah. Okay, Mara, thank you. Now, also breaking right now, the Oakland County Sheriff says the eighth of the nine victims in the Rochester Hills splash pad shooting has now gone home. The 30-year-old from Rochester Hills said to be resting comfortably there. A 39-year-old mother shot while protecting her children from the shooter is the last victim who remains in the hospital. Prosecutors at the Samantha Wall murder trial take the jury inside the interrogation room. I just want to get this over with, bro, and prove my innocence, bro, like I didn't do nothing, bro. Tonight, we're hearing what Michael Jackson Bolano said to investigators just hours after his arrest. We are now into the fourth week of the trial with the prosecution still presenting evidence. And today, the focus moved to what happened after Michael Jackson Bolanos was arrested in connection with this case. So let's get out to Will Jones. Will, he sounded like he was adamant the entire time. And Kimberly and Devin, Michael Jackson Bolanos' frustration grew throughout the questioning by detectives, even at one point threatening to sue a detective for defamation of character. But detectives maintained that the evidence was on their side. When Detroit police detectives interrogated Michael Jackson Bolanos last year, he repeatedly denied any involvement in a murder. I'm not lying about murders or nothing, bro. I didn't do nothing. Samantha Wool was found stabbed to death outside her Lafayette Park condo last October. Jackson Bolanos was arrested a month later. He's now on trial for first degree murder, home invasion, and lying to a peace officer in connection to Wool's death. A second time Jackson Bolanos was interrogated, he once again reiterated his innocence. I don't know this woman. I don't know anything about the woman except for when it popped up on the news, bro. That's it. The only thing that I know that I was in the wrong area at the wrong time. We also heard from Tierra White, who Jackson Bolanos began dating last September. She spoke to Jackson Bolano's demeanor and appearance the night the wall was killed. When Mr. Jackson Bolano came home, um, did he appear to you to be covered in blood? Not at all. Did he appear to you to look as if he had just gotten into some argument with someone or anything? Did anything appear different about him? Not at all. Jackson Bolanos described himself as homeless, and he said he had just been walking around the night that Wool was murdered. Again, he emphasized his innocence and in that he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. We're live downtown. Will Jones, Local 4. Another day of captivating testimony. Okay, Will, we appreciate it. Let's take a look at live pictures now. The Supreme Court in Washington. Today, the high court delivering a partial victory to former President Trump. The justices deciding presidents are entitled to immunity from prosecution for official conduct while in office, though they can be prosecuted for actions taken in a private capacity. The case now headed to a lower court. Alice Barr has a look at how it impacts the charges against the former president. Alice? 
Good evening. The Supreme Court rejected former President Trump's claims of absolute immunity for all of his actions, but they did recognize substantial immunity for official acts, so much so that the liberal justices responded with the words, with fear for our democracy, I dissent. The Supreme Court today setting a new standard for presidential immunity that effectively hands a victory to former President Trump. The high court ruling the former president is immune from prosecution for official conduct related to his presidential duties while he was in office, though not for personal acts. The tricky part is what is an official act and what is not an official act and how are we going to decide it? The case now heads to a lower court to sort that out, making it highly unlikely Mr. Trump will go to trial before the November election. On charges, he tried to illegally overturn the 2020 election results, culminating in the January 6 Capitol attack. The former president calling it a big win, while a senior Biden campaign advisor said the ruling doesn't change the facts, arguing that Donald Trump snapped after losing the 2020 election. Protesters on both sides reacting outside the high court. I think Trump's role on January 6th was the commander in chief. I'm outraged that American citizens will go to the polls in November not knowing the details. The decision grants immunity to core presidential powers, including Mr. Trump's contacts with Justice Department officials as he sought to reverse the 2020 results and outlines presumptive immunity for acts on the outer perimeter of official duties, like his discussions with former Vice President Mike Pence. In the majority opinion, Chief Justice John Roberts writing that immunity for official conduct is necessary to safeguard an energetic, independent executive. In a blister during dissent, the three liberal justices said, quote, the court effectively creates a law-free zone around the president, upsetting the status quo that has existed since the founding. Critically, the ruling not only prevents a president from being prosecuted for any official acts, it also says that official acts cannot be used as evidence in prosecutions over any unofficial acts, and that makes it very difficult to bring a case against a president under any circumstances. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice, now ahead here at 530, we've got a law professor and constitutional expert to join us live to help clear up the confusion, explain what this ruling means. In 2022 alone, Michigan State Police say close to 27,000 crashes involved speeding. That's an 8% increase over the previous year. But now to combat that, drivers can expect to see more troopers out on the road with those radar guns at the ready. Rod Maloney is live on this story tonight. Rod, a lot of these crashes could be avoided if people just slowed down. Right, like the kind of traffic we see out here in I-96. At least on this side, it's bumper to bumper. On the other side, it's not. And we've seen some crazy driving in there and in other places. Now, over the weekend, a woman was killed in Warren when three uh, hopped up sports cars were screaming and racing down eight mile and she perished. And so the MSP is saying it's gotten out of hand. They need some help. And so they're adding officers, adding patrols to try and calm things down out here. Let's face it, we don't watch the speed limit much around here anymore. Local 4 drove 55 miles per hour on the lodge today, the speed limit, and it's as if we were standing still. And a lot of drivers say it's getting crazy out here. You know, people be having fun, having their way. They be having their little hell cats. The way people drive now is so offensive. It's not even defensive. Like, you really got to be looking for everybody to see what they're doing because just to make sure you're okay. They will fly by you and I, and I feel like I'm a grandfather because I'm, they feel like, make me feel like I'm driving slow, but I'm driving the speed limit. Doing 80 is passe and slow these days. 100 plus is common and a problem the Michigan State Police and Lieutenant Mike Shaw say they're starting to crack down on. Most of the times, if someone's driving like 100 miles an hour and they're tailgating and they're doing reckless driving, they're not good drivers. So what the problem is, is you're combining that speed with somebody that's not a very good driver. Starting today and lasting through much of the summer, MSP will add new and more officers. Do you think that it's good for MSP to be out there putting more more patrols definitely on more patrols because when stuff is going on it's like where are the police like there's nobody around when crazy stuff is going on it has got to be calm cool collective and drive home safely yeah take their time you know put on some anita baker or something you know what i'm saying now lieutenant shaw says all of this really got its start in covid 
And so, you know, it hasn't abated at all. He says that the Office of Highway Safety Planning is putting up those federal dollars to get more cops out on the street running from today until the end of July. Back to you. That one guy's got the best advice of all. Just put on some Anita Baker. Chill out. Don't drive yes, fast. Sir. Rob, yes, before, you, yes, before you go, um, I'm just wondering, is speed the only thing they'll watch for? What about hands-free driving, you know, with your cell phone, well, that's with the cell thing. phone that kind they, of thing? Most of it is the speed, but yes, they'll be looking for people on their phones, holding it to their ear, texting while driving, not wearing seatbelts. They'll be watching for all of that, ready to hand out still more tickets. There you go. All right, Rod, thanks. Let's turn now to the weather, take a live look outside. Our Windsor Sky Cam, look at that. Gorgeous. Postcard shot <laughs> as we usher in July today with sunshine and temperatures in the 70s, but you might want to get out and enjoy this milder weather while you can because it's not going to last. That's right. Let's get over to Kim Adams, and uh, temperature's going to ramp up heading into the fourth, looks like, Kim. I know. Unfortunately, it looks like we're peaking just a little bit too early with all this beautiful weather as it will be heating up and becoming much more humid for the holiday. Right now, temps are in the mid-70s. Our normal high is up to 83 degrees, so we're below normal by quite a bit. But we heat right back up again. In fact, by Wednesday, we're in the upper 80s, close to 90. And then for Thursday, temps will be back into the mid 80s with a lot of humidity around. With all that heat and humidity, can't rule out a few showers, possibly even a couple of thunderstorms. Our best chance for severe weather this week will be Wednesday afternoon and evening. Does cool down a little bit temporarily for the weekend, but still warm and humid for the holiday ahead. We'll talk about more uh, with those showers and thunderstorms on the way and how they could affect your holiday plans coming up.